Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the channel for another round of CSEC Social Studies Multiple Choice Items. Remember to like, share, and subscribe to the channel. All right, let's go straight to screen sharing right now so that we can begin. Great. Right, great. So number one says, which of the following are aspects of the socialization process? One says recreational activity. Two says religious teaching. Three says reproduction. So you need a combination of answers. Is it a combination of two or, a com or just all of the above, I should say. All right. Socialization. Socialization is actually teaching you how to function as a human being or as a good citizen, sorry, in society. Right? So let's look at recreational activities. Mm -hmm. Religious teaching, yes, but reproduction now is the continuation of the human race. So that has nothing to do with the socialization process. So it has to be a combination of one and two. So anyone that reproduction is in is not correct. So the answer for number one is a recreational activity and religious teaching. Now, number two says, in which of the following family types are cultural traditions passed from older members to children most easily? It says most easily, you know, so this means that cultural tradition is passed on in all the families, but which one is it easily done? So you have to pay attention to that. A says nuclear, B says extended, C says single parent, D says sibling control. Which group in the family would be most involved in cultural tradition in the passing down of cultural tradition think about it who most who mostly does this in any family the person that regularly does this or, or has a wealth of knowledge in terms of culture and traditions are usually a grandparents so any family that includes your grandparents would have been correct so the answer then for two is B, extended, because we know that it's more than two generations living together. So the answer for two is B, extended. Number three now says the term patrifocal refers to a family in which A, the father is the authority figure in the household, B, the mother is not present in the household, C, kinship is traced along the father's line of ancestors, or D, husband and wife live at home live at the home of the husband's parents or at anywhere for kinship terms what i do to distinguish them easily the ones that begins with p we know that the man is the central authority figure right so we just say paternal anything with p paternal anything with m maternal so patrifocal we know it is some authority surrounding the male figure good so we know that the mother is not present in the household. Kinship is traced along the father's line of ancestors. Husband and wife live at the husband's parents. Also, all of them surrounds the man. So we know that it's it's not the father is the authority figure in the household. Yes, but that is more leaning towards patriarchy. Good. The mother is not present in the household. Kinship is traced along the father's line. That is patrilineal. And the hus husband and wife live at the husband's parents. That's not it too. So the best answer here, remember we said that P refers to the father being the central um, authority. Though A says the father is the authority figure in the household. It's more patriarchal. But that's the best suggested answer for three. So I would go with A for three. All right, four says, more, more husbands are now performing household chores, mainly because they, one second. Sorry about that. So number four says, more husbands are now performing household chores, mainly because they, A, get more time off from work than their wives, 
B, prefer to remain at home and assist their wives. C, enjoy using the labor-saving devices in the home. Or D, are responding to the changing roles of family members. Yes, men are doing more household chores, right? All of these can be possible answers. However, you are going to select the best answer or the most appropriate answer. Yeah, some men get um, more time off from work. Some of them prefer to remain at home because we are stay-at-home dads now in this modern time, right? Many of them like using, the, not many of them, I should say, a small amount of men would probably enjoy using a labor-saving device, really? Because men, probably a lot of men don't like wash, don't like when them food is heated up in microwaves. So that might be a problem. So the best possible answer for number four is D. They are responding to the changing roles of family members. This means that they understand that women are now educated and women are going out to work. And they understand that one can one and can, cannot clap or bird cannot fly on one wing right so if two persons are working then that is a two income also so they are responding to the changing roles of family members so four is d number five now says which of the following is not a role that females traditionally play in the family all right <clears throat> so this now pay attention to this question three of them the women tra the women traditionally do however there is one that the woman the woman doesn't traditionally do, right? That is probably modern. All right, A says caregiver, B says homemaker, C says breadwinner, D says socializing agent. Remember that the female was always socializing agent, right? Because women usually stay home and take care of the kids. So that's a caregiver and a homemaker. So the woman was not traditionally a breadwinner. It was the men who are traditional breadwinners. So the answer for number five is C, breadwinner. Number six now says, which of the following would most likely result from women working outside the home? I says, improved standard of living. I, I says, higher self-esteem for women. And I, I, I says, decline in family values. Now, um, number six is a little bit problematic. Why I say it is problematic is because a lot of these are as a result of women working outside of the home, right? Improved standard of living because more money is coming in. Higher self-esteem for women because them actually are work and can be independent and can take care of themselves and don't have to necessarily depend on a male, right? Some persons might argue that the families have declined because the women are no longer there to be the, to be the main agent of socialization, the homemaker, the caregiver, because she has to go out and work. And many times women come in late, so they're not so involved or they don't interact as much with the kids. However, for me personally, this is to a lesser extent, right? So we actually had a debate on this among teachers. So some teachers believe it is one, two, and three. It is all of them. Improved standard of living, higher self-esteem for women, and decline in family values. But I wouldn't select decline in family values because that, for me personally, that is to a lesser extent, right? Because women are working, them come home, and them are run, they are running their households just the same, and the values are up there for me. The decline is to a lesser extent. So for me, I would choose A for number six, one and two only. Improved standard of living and higher self-esteem for women. Number seven now says, which of the following situations represents a recent change in the roles of family members? A, fathers being employed in white collar jobs. B, mothers spending more time with their babies. C, adolescents playing a part in family decision making. Or D, grandparents playing a more effective socialization role. All right. So for number seven, what represents a recent change? Fathers being employed in white collar jobs. That is not recent because that has been happening for years where when the society was even male dominated. Good mothers spending more time with their babies. 
that's not recent because that is a traditional role where women used to be caregivers. Grandparents playing a more effective socialization role. Grandparents has always been an agent of socialization, so that is not recent. So the only possible answer that we are left with is C, adolescents playing a part in family decision making because remember that kids were to be seen and not to be heard. Kids were not allowed to participate in adult decision, but we see now that that is changing recently. So the answer for number seven is C, adolescents playing a part in family decision making. Number eight now says, which of the following best explains the reason for the promotion of family planning in the Caribbean? A, to ensure a balance in numbers between male and female. B, to teach parents to supervise the activities of their children. C, to allow persons to have sexual relationships with chosen partners. Or D, to give parents control over the number and spacing of their children. Or why as family planning become so popular? Why are they promoting it so much? Is it to ensure a balance between the males and females? No, that doesn't make any sense. B, to teach parents to supervise activities for their children. Family planning, we know, if you know what family planning is, you know it, is, it delays pregnancy or prevents pregnancy, right? So that doesn't make sense, right? To allow persons to have sexual relationships with choosing partners. No, family planning, I have nothing to do with that. Understand? So the only possible answer left there is D, to give parents control over the number and spacing of their children. We know that is the main reason for family planning, right? So persons decide when they actually want to start a family, right? All right, number nine says, which of the following is likely to undermine the authority of parents in the home? A, setting and enforcing clear rules for conduct. B, inconsistent inconsistency in rewarding and punishing children c giving each allowances to adolescent family members or d allowing children to participate in family decision making so which of the following is likely to undermine the authority of parents so this is something bad our parents are slacking off in a particular area that is what you are to look for setting and enforcing clear rules for conduct no that doesn't undermine authority that actually cements authority inconsistent in, in rewarding and punishing children yes that is the answer so, so for number nine the answer is b so if the parent is inconsistent in reward and punishment this child is going to think that the parent is a joke right giving cash allowances no that doesn't allow that doesn't undermine authority because we know you're going to get something right you're going to be yourself in order to get it Allowing children to participate in family decision making? No, that's actually a good thing, which was discussed earlier. All right, so item 10 is based on the following passage. Unemployment and hard economic conditions have forced both parents in some Caribbean families to migrate, leaving an elder son or daughter to care for younger brothers and sisters. So this is saying that many parents, because of economic conditions, right, left their kids to go somewhere else to live and to work and leave an older sibling in charge of the younger children. All right, so 10 says, which of the following problems is least likely to affect the younger brothers and sisters? All right, so the younger ones, what is least likely to affect them? Low achievement at school, A. B says breakdown in discipline in the home. C says lack of adult role models in the home. Or D says lack of opportunity for peer group interaction. Low achievement in school. That is going to have great impact on them because if they're not doing well, then it means that they might drop out or they might not be employable when they leave school. So that is a problem. Breakdown in discipline in the home, that is a problem because CDA can come in on them. The cops can come in. They can go there and do wrong things and get into trouble. So that is greatly likely to affect the family. Lack of adult role models in the home. Yes, because children supervising children no adult is there to show them right from wrong so d now says lack of opportunity for peer group interaction that is a problem but that has the least effect on them so the answer for number 10 is d as in dog number 11 now says which of the following most likely accounts for the high incidence of street children in the caribbean is it a selling off illegal drugs b stealing to support self c abandonment of children or D, involvement in prostitution. Street children, meaning that they live on the street, they have nowhere else to go. 
involvement in prostitution. Them can leave them yard and go prostitute at night time, so it not necessarily mean say they live on the street. Stealing to support self, not necessarily. Selling off illegal drugs, they can do both things and still be living at home, but abandonment of children, meaning that parents go and left them or the parents kick them out of the house. So the answer for number 11 is C, abandonment of children. That is most likely to cause a child to live on the street. Number 12 now says, which of the following is not a way by which traditional customs are kept alive in the Caribbean? A, archives compiling local oral history, villages organizing folk festivals annually, C, families practicing ancestral dances regularly, or D, government supporting senior citizens' homes. What is not a way which traditional customs are kept alive if they are saved in archives? Yes, then they can be shown to generations to come. Villages organizing folk festivals so you can actually see the dances, the traditional dances being performed so they can be kept alive. Families practicing ancestral dances regularly so that the younger ones can learn these dances and keep doing them. That actually keeps it alive. So the one that is not a way to keep it alive is government supporting senior citizens' homes. That has nothing to do with traditional customs. So the answer for number 12 is D. Number 13 now says, which of the following characteristics must a group possess for it to be considered a formal group? So it's a combination of two or all three. What must, is, what must it have to be a formal group, right? Code of conduct, specific objectives, membership requirements, right? All of these are a requirement or a characteristic of a formal group. Remember, a formal group, you know, has steps to become a member. They have a code of conduct that contains rules and regulations, right? And responsibilities as well. There are also sanctions if you break those rules. Good. And there are specific objectives because all formal groups have a specific purpose or various specific purposes. So all of the above. So the answer for number 13 is D, one, two, and three. All right. Number 14 now. A school is a formal group mainly because members A, perform the same rituals, B, live in the same community, C, are selected by other members, or D, participate in community activities. All right? Number 14 is problematic. Right, you have to pay close attention to the suggested answers to find the correct one because the answer is not clearly stated, even if you know what a formal group is inside out. This can be very problematic. All right, let's look at it. Perform the same rituals. What are those rituals? If you don't know what they are, then this suggested answer is not going to mean anything to you. B says live in the same community. We know that. Students from schools don't normally live in the same community. They come from various communities to come to a school. So that one is out. So we can use the process of elimination. Good. Are selected by other members. Um, no, the ministry sends students to schools or you can be transferred there. But it's not necessarily your other classmates who select you to go to the school. So that one is out as well. Participate in community activities. What are those community activities? So we are left with A and D. So for D, we don't know what those community activities are. A says rituals, right? These are things that you do in order to show that you are a part of the group. So a ritual, for example, a ritual would be devotion, right? Standing at attention for the national anthem or the national pledge those kinds of things, all right? So those would be rituals. So the best answer for number 14 is between A and D. But we are going to select A because those rituals must be practiced and must be followed. And many times too, if they are not followed, then they are sanctions. And that is a characteristic of a formal group. So the best answer is A for number 14. Number 15, which of the following actions is likely to lead to the survival of a group? Survival of a group, which is going to allow the group to go on and on. A, solving problems as a group, members acting individually. C, leader controlling group members, or D, members being critical of group goals. 
All right, so the one layer that is likely to make the group survive is clearly stated. The other three is not going to allow the group to survive because if members are very critical of group goals, nobody would want to achieve those goals. So the group are going to have problems or the group is going to fall apart. Leader controlling group members, nobody likes to be controlled and nobody likes an autocratic leader. We like democracy. Though laser fear is a free for all, a lot of persons don't like laser fear leaders who can't take initiative can't make certain decisions, allow members to do whatever they want and get away with it. That can be problematic in a group, right? Members acting individually, no, a group requires teamwork. So those things can allow a group to fall apart. So the only possible answer left there that can help with the survival of a group is solving problems as a group. So if one person have a problem or a group of persons have a problem, we come together as a group, I show the problem and come to an amicable solution, right? We're not going to please everybody, you know, but we're going to make it so that majority um, is pleased. And many times in groups, we have to agree to disagree. All right. Number 16 now says, which of the following are characteristics of a strong leader? Is it I is willing to make decisions? I, I is always lenient to members. I, I, I <clears throat> does not tolerate disorder. A strong leader, sorry, can't always be lenient with members because if you allow persons to get away with things, other persons are going to want to get away with it too. And that can be problematic in the group. Willing to make decisions? Yes. That's a characteristic of, characteristic of a strong leader. Does not tolerate disorder? Characteristic of a strong leader because you don't want disorder and people like do whatever they want to do and people end up and like it's anarchy or martial law has broken out. So we know that anyone that contains is always union with members. I, I, we know that is incorrect. So A says I and I, I. So we know that is incorrect. B says I and I, I, I. C says I, I and I, I, I. D, all of the above. So we know that B is incorrect, C is incorrect, A is incorrect because it contains I, I. So the only possible answer there is B for number 16. I and I, I only. Number 17 to 18 refer to the following dialogue. Sister, when Marvin was group leader, he was always ordering us about. Paul says, me, I prefer a group leader who allows members to do as they please. 17 says, the leadership style of Marvin as described in the dialogue above is. Marvin, the leadership style of Marvin and Sita said, when Marvin was group leader, he, or, he was always ordering us about. So who is somebody who orders persons about and a TikTok from them? Is it A, autocratic, B, democratic, C, laser fair, sorry, C, charismatic, or D, laser fair? Good. Now, A, autocratic, B, democratic, C, charismatic, D, laser fair. The answer for number 17 is A. Autocratic, that is a leader who orders people around, who bosses people. Good. Number 18 now says, Paul's statement indicates that he refers, he prefers a leader with a style that is, remember Paul says, me, I prefer a group leader who allows members to do as they please. Who, what type of leader, you know, allows members to do as they please? A says autocratic, B says democratic, C says laser fair, D says charismatic. So the answer for number C is, sorry, the answer for number 18 is C, laser fear. That is a free for all leader who allows people to do whatever they want to do. Number 19 says, adolescents are most likely to influence each other in a positive way. Adolescents, young people are most likely to influence each other in a positive way when they do what? Is it A, force each other to accept the same values? B, advise each other to carry out antisocial activities? C, encourage each other to always challenge adults' views, or D, become involved in guidance and counseling activities, right? Or can they influence each other in a positive way? Is it force each other to accept the same values? If you're forcing people, then that can be positive because people don't like to be forced to do anything. B says, advise each other to carry out antisocial activities. We're going to carry out antisocial activities, mean you're going to be disorderly, you're going to break some rule or break some law. So that cannot be positive. C says, encourage each other to always challenge adults' views, not always, because sometimes they 
adults are dead on correct and if you try to challenge them it's going to be problematic because some things don't need to be challenged not saying you shouldn't challenge at all but you shouldn't always challenge especially when you know that someone is right or something is correct so the possible, the only one that is left is E, become involved in guidance and counseling activities. Yes, those things are actually positive because you're doing something good for others or for yourself. So the answer for number 19 is D. Number 20 now says democratic control and open membership are features of A, street gang, B says public company, C says private company, or D says cooperative society. All right. It says, number 20 says, open membership. We know it cannot be any of the companies because no company has open membership. Every company has a requirement if you want to join as an employee, a partner, or a shareholder. There are requirements for membership. And then just let them, they don't just take up anybody off the street and put them so we know that public company, private company is out, right? We know that a street gang doesn't have democratic control, neither does it have open membership. Gangs are usually under autocratic control and there are some requirements to join. So the other only possible one left is cooperative society. So do some research and find out what a cooperative society is. 21 now says, which of the following would not usually be associated with educational institutions, institutions for learning, what would not usually associate with them? A, rules and regulations, B, customs and traditions, C, suppression of freedom, or D, transmission of culture. Rules and regulations are a part of every educational institution, right? Because those are there to govern members. Customs and traditions, yes, things that they generally do over and over and over again. Transmission of culture, yes, that's why we have history class, music class, dance class. Yes, we have devotion, we have Year's Day, Black History Month, so on and so forth. Independence, emancipation, so forth. So the only possible answer left there is C, suppression of freedom. Your freedom is never suppressed in an institution, an educational institution, if you're living in a democratic society, that is. So the answer for number 21 is C, suppression of freedom. No, 22 says, which of the following may be classified as institutions? I, government, I, I, marriage, I, 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 religion. This one, no, problematic again, because there was a disagreement on the answer. Some teachers believe that um, marriage is an institution. There, before, before I even go there, we know that government, political institution, that religion, religious institution, but marriage now, some teachers believe that marriage is an institution. Yes, it endures over time, but it doesn't have some of the characteristics for me personally to classify it under any one of the two definitions. Remember, one definition for institution is a pattern of behavior right and then another one is they serve particular needs in society right for me i can't put marriage under any of those two headings so i wouldn't include marriage as being an institution so i would go with government and religion so my answer for number 22 government and religion would be i and i i i However, that is not there in the suggested answers. So because that combination is not there in the, suge in the suggested answers, which is I and I, 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 because A says I only, which is government, but we know that religion is an institution. So that would be correct too. This says I and I, I, government and marriage. Again, religions are institutions. C says two and three, marriage and religion, but we know that government is an institution. B says I, 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 and I, I, I. So 22 is D, all of the above. 23 now says, which of the following is least likely to lead to protest by a trade union? Is it A, inadequate benefit for workers? B, unhealthy working environment? C, few opportunities for promotion. D, expensive housing for managers. Know that trade unions represent the interest of workers. 
right? So inadequate benefits, that would be an interest of worker. Unhealthy working conditions, that would be an interest. Few opportunities for promotion, that would be an interest of the workers. Expensive housing for managers, no. That might be of an interest to some workers, but not all workers, and that would be on that would be to a lesser extent, right? So number 23 is D, that is least likely to lead to a protest by trade unions, expensive housing for managers. No, number 24 says, which of the following election strategies is a political party likely to use to reach a large number of persons in the shortest possible time? Can you? Political parties used to reach large amounts of people. Is it A, public meetings, B, radio advertisements, C, host to host visits, or D, public opinion surveys, right? Public meetings, yes, that they reach large groups, you know, but only that group at a particular time. Host to host visits, no, they're not going to reach large amounts of people for that, right? D, public opinion surveys, not going to reach a large amount of people because surveys usually use a small sample of the population. Right, so the one that is used to reach a large number of people in the shortest possible time is radio advertisements. Because, for example, you're advertising in Jamaica and RJR, wherever persons are in Jamaica listening to RJR, they are going to hear that announcement from the political party. So, the answer for number 24 is D. All right, so that are going too fast. Ooh. Wait, are going too fast. All right, 25 now. It says, Caribbean countries where the Queen of England is the head of state may be described as A, A, republic, B, monarchy, C, democracy, or D, dictatorship. Caribbean, where the Queen of England is the head of state. Number 25 is B, monarchy, because monarchy represents the king or the queen. Not a republic, because they would have had full freedom and done away with any European rule or any monarchy, right? So they don't have a governor general. They have a president, right? That's in a presidential republic, or they have the prime minister with full executive authority in a parliamentary republic. But Democracies, usually fully free. Dictatorship, have one leader who doesn't take any talk from any external source, right? He runs the country mainly by is him being the main authority figure. Good and cannot be challenged as you might be put to death or in prison. So the answer for no, number 25 is B. 26 now, which of the following groups of Caribbean countries have a republican form of government? All right, again, Think about the country that you live in or another country that you know that has a particular style of government. For me, I live in Jamaica. So anyone that contains Jamaica, I know is not a republic because in Jamaica, we are a constitutional monarchy. Good? So clear out the bat, I know D is not correct. So because D has Jamaica, St. Vincent, and the Grenadines, I know that's not correct because we have constitutional monarchy. C says Guyana and Trinidad and Tobago. B says Antigua and Barbuda and Montserrat. A says Barbados and St. Kitts. So C is there, Guyana, Trinidad, and Tobago. Those two countries are republics. So the answer for number 26 is C. 27. In a constitutional monarchy, the political leader of the victorious party becomes A, Prime Minister, B, Governor General, C, Leader of the House, or D, President of the Senate. We know that the leader of the victorious party automatically becomes the Prime Minister under constitutional monarchy. So the answer for number 27 is A. Number 28 now, the role of the opposition in Parliament can best be described as A, inciting civil disobedience, B, voting in favor of bills debated in parliament, C, rejecting policies which the ruling party proposes, or D, analyzing government's policies and presenting alternatives. The opposition is not there to oppose or to keep their mouth shut. The, the main role of the opposition is to keep the government of the day in check. So they are to analyze what they put forward 
And if they don't like it or they think that it won't work, then they put forward alternatives. So the answer for number 28 is D, the role of the opposition, analyzing government's policies and presenting alternatives. 29 now says, in all CARICOM countries, citizens have the right to vote. This right is preserved because, what preserves, what preserves the right to vote? A, general elections occur every four or five years. B, citizens only vote if required by the law to do so. C, it is enshrined in the constitutions of these countries. Or D, there are two or more political parties for which citizens vote. The answer for number 29 is C. It is enshrined in the constitutions of these countries. So the constitution gives gives every human being who reaches a certain age the right to vote. 30 says, the Constitution of Commonwealth Caribbean countries guarantees citizens freedom of conscience, expression, assembly, and movement. These freedoms are usually referred to as A, citizenship, B, civic duties, C, human rights, D, independence. And so for 30 is C, human rights. Number 31 now says, the population density of a country will be I if... A, birth rate is high and death rate is low. B, death rate is low and birth rate is low. C, death rate is high and the birth rate is low. Or D, birth rate is high and the death rate is high. Let's analyze all the answers for number 31. All right, let's start at D. D says birth rate is high and death rate is high. So if birth rate is high and death rate is high, it means that those who are being born are cancelled out by those who die. So the same amount of person being born, same amount of persons dying. So the population remains static, right? C says death rate is high and birth rate is low. If death rate is high, then we're not gonna have a, and birth rate is low, we're not gonna have a problem with population density because it would mean that more persons are dying than those who are being born. So it means the population is going to decline. B says death rate is low and birth rate is low. Same like the birth rate being high and the death rate being high. So we are left with A. A says birth rate is high and death rate is low. So more persons are being born than those who are dying. So the population is going to have an increase that is going to affect population density. So the answer for 31 is A. 32 now says, which of the following best describes a census? What is a census? A, collection of information on the birth on the births and deaths in a country. B, the registration of persons in preparation for general elections in a country. Or C, information on the amount of money spent on goods and services in a country. Or D, the counting and recording of the characteristics of the population in a country. The answer for number 32 is D. A census is the counting and recording of the characteristics of the population in a country. Thank you for watching this video. And I am going to complete this in another video. So in the next video, I will start from 33 right up to 60. Have a nice day. Remember to like, share, and subscribe. Share with a friend, share with a classmate, share with a family member. Thank you, guys.